Hello, I'm Eric Reynolds of Bandana Man, and today we're going to talk about how to use and light a Kelly kettle. A Kelly kettle is a fantastic thing to have when you're in the wilderness, or even actually when the power goes out, because it's the best and fastest way to get water boiled quickly and easily. All right, now so before you get started lighting your Kelly kettle, there's a couple things that you really got to have. First, you got to get all your kindling. Now, I've already got some very small kindling here, some little pine branches about the size of toothpicks, some paper, some uh, fuzzed up jute string, and a little piece of uh, birch bark in my tinder ball inside the fire base. But I also have some more to feed it here. These are all pencil thick, or actually less than pencil thick uh, twigs and small little things that I'm going to feed to the Kelly kettle first. I also have a whole pile of kindling. Now this stuff is tinder, this stuff is kindling, okay? These are all pencil thick and a little bit larger, but they're not as big as like say wrist thick. Wrist thick would be fuel wood, so this is all smaller. Because this is your Kelly kettle, you can't get wrist thick size stuff inside inside the hole. You can only use the kindling size. So that's a nice thing about these. You really don't have to gather much more than what it would normally take you to get a fire going. All right. Having said that, what we're going to do today is we're going to light our Kelly kettle up with an Uko storm match. Okay. But before we go and light the kettle, you have to always make sure you add water to the kettle first. Um, you really don't. The stainless steel ones are pretty good with the heat protect or heat and all of that, but um, you can damage the kettle if you heat it while it's dry. So, here I've got an old canteen with a quart of water, and we're going to pour it right into the water chamber, which is the like a water jacket that goes around the chimney. All right. So one quart of water is added in. You'll notice that the Kelly kettle comes with mine's an older one, and it comes with, with an orange um, plug. Okay, you can put the orange plug in to keep the water from spilling out, but you can't leave it in when you go to heat it because it'll cause an, cause danger. It's a dangerous situation because the, everything is going to expand in here and the plug might get stuck and then you have a problem with an explosion from steam. All sorts of bad stuff happen. Make sure you always take the plug out before you put it on the flames or any other obstruction that's in the nozzle of the water jacket here. Um, unless you have a newer made um, one that's green. The green ones actually have a whistle built into them and it allows the steam to escape. In any case, we'll set that back there for a second while we get this thing going. All right, back to the storm match. Now, storm matches are not strike anywhere. They're strike on the box. So we're going to tr try these out here. These are not the uh, Uko Titans. These are the Uko regular size storm matches. Windproof and waterproof. All right, you strike them on the side of the box. Well, here we go. Okay, that broke. Let's try another one. Challenges, challenges, challenges. Okay, here goes our Uko match. Now, what I'm going to do is pick up my fire base with the tinder in it, and I'm going to light the tinder while it's up. This fire burns up. Now, for more on kindling and tinder, see my article on the Woodsman's Journal online about tinder burning up. Okay, we're going to keep that tilted. We're going to add a couple more little twigs in here to keep this thing fed. Then once that starts getting going, we're going to put this right on there. And we're going to show you a marvel of engineering, a thing called a smoke shifter. All right, what that allows you to do is... some air going in there and then you can start feeding your Kelly kettle with these little tiny chips of wood. Careful it's very hot over the top of the thing. You really don't want to put your hand over there too very much. Okay let's give it some more air. Okay we got some flames coming off the top. So now I'm going to start switching it to some of the bigger things, more pencil-y sized stick stuff. Now see, we got the flame shooting up. That means we've got air coming in through here and rocketing out of the top. A Kelly kettle is actually a type of rocket stove. And what it's going to do is it's going to heat up the chamber, the outside chamber where the water's kept, as the smoke and the hot gases go up through the chimney. All right, so 
Now we're going to see how long it takes us to boil this water. So let's get back to you in a few minutes with some boiled water. Okay. Hello, it's the Bandana Man back again. As you can hear, our fire is about ready to start boiling the water. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you the, the easy and safe way of taking it off. It's starting to boil now. It's been about four minutes. You bring the, thing, the handles like this, and you pinch, and you lift it up and off. Okay? And then now to dump the water out into the pot, what we're going to do is you're going to use the chain from the stopper, and you're going to go like this. And that pours all your nice boiled water out. Some of it hit the ground, unfortunately, but not much. And that, right there, is how you use a Kelly kettle to boil your water. Now, I still have some fire in, in the pan here, and I don't really want the fire in the pan anymore. If I was going to boil more water, I could quickly quick put more water into the Kelly kettle, set it on there. Um, but at this point, I've got the water that I need. I only wanted just a couple cups. So we're all good. But now, just to give you a heads up on this, this took about four to five minutes to boil the water, a liter of water, completely up, ready to go. You're all set, and you can have a nice drink or you can wash something up, water sterilized and purified. So that's how you go about uh, using a Kelly kettle. I hope this made some sense to you. Uh, for more information, uh, check out my blog, the Woodsman's Journal Online, or my YouTube, Bandana Man Productions. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And thank you to my long-suffering cameraman who's been photographing this. And until next time, happy trails.